recording, still ask questions, whatever we got to do, make sure we do. Okay, I'm going to see real quick if we should have been asking questions on the stuff that was reviewed from the quiz, so we'll find out how we felt. Okay, hopefully it went well. Um, all the stuff was pretty much from your review sheet. Um, in terms of the, uh, you know, probably the key was talking about the parabola is equal to zero. If that messed you up, I'll look at that. I might take that out. It probably should just be y equals, but I just wanted you to find the domain range of that parabola. So anyway, moving on here. So one one still review. It's not quite calc. Uh, one two we get into limits. Now we're actually getting into calc. Okay. So one 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 two. I'm trying to do all one, uh, one lesson uh, with today. I don't know if I'll get through it all, but we'll see. Okay. So. Um, you guys know what a linear function is. We talked about that in review already. Y, uh, f of x is mx plus b. M is your, m and b are constants. M is your slope. B is your y-intercept. We're good with that. Okay. It's called linear because the graph of the equation we recognize it has a y-intercept. It's a constant growth, so it's a linear model. It doesn't have any curvature or anything like that. Okay. Since the slope is the ratio of change between y to x, it can be interpreted as the rate of change with y with respect to x. That's what just saying rise over run. Okay, so you can do. I like to do it up here more. I like going rise, run. They put it on the bottom. Doesn't really matter. But then you kind of see where the slope formula come from. Um, you do need to know what these guys are. Okay, triangle. Okay, that means change. Okay, so if you want to make a little note of that, this just means when you see this later for us, change in y over change in x. Change in y over change in x is a quicker way than, than writing the formula. Change is just y minus y over x minus x, right? You're figuring out how it's changing. So triangle is kind of a shorthand that they do that with. Any questions on that? Okay, like I said, I'm going to go over this part a little bit quicker because it's not, this is still review. Okay, the following figure shows several lines labeled with their slopes, just giving you the idea of different slopes and in their angles. You got your five, it's pretty steep, two, one's a very basic, one half flattening out, et cetera. Okay, so this example here, you just did this on your quiz, but we'll do it again. Find linear function whose graph passes through these points. So we have to do change in y over change in x. So we're going to go 5 minus a negative 1 over 2 minus a negative 1. So minus a minus 6 over 3. So 2 is our slope. Now that you have your slope, you plug it in y equals 2x plus b. Then you plug in a point for x and y to get b. 5 equals 2 times 2 plus b. 5 equals 4 plus b. Therefore, b is 1. So that would be your equation of that one. Okay, linear function is given by 6 minus 5x. If x increases by 2, how does y change? So if x increases by 2, how does y change? So what's the relationship between y every time x goes up by 2? So if we're doing if I plug in x is 3, x is 5, x is 7, how does y change? Well, you kind of just cheat from the slope, right? What's 2 times negative 5? Negative 10. So it changes by negative 10. Okay? They just go into showing you that in terms of slope is negative 5. So we know the change, they write it kind of out. The change in y over the change in x is negative 5. So if I essentially, if I make this change by 2 here, I would just times this by 2, and I would just get negative 10 would be that new change. I mean, that's all they're writing it out. Okay. Still did review stuff, Nikita, so you're probably still good to start now. Okay, so now I'll slow down here. I know I was going faster. If you're like, I can't keep up, I'm going to go slower now. Okay, so this is a tangent problem. So what does tangent mean? We did talk about tangent in 20. It's when you're discriminant, it's 1, which means it's essentially, <laughs> uh-oh, 
Tangent means it hits at one point. Okay, it's tangent to the graph means it goes through exactly one point. Okay, so it's that bounce example of your parabolas or tangent to the x-axis, or like this line right here is tangent to that circle. Okay, um, this is tangent to the uh, axis there, or that spot there, not the last one. But anyways, so the word tangent comes from the Latin word tangens, uh, which means touching. For a simple curve such as a circle, a tangent is a line that intersects circle at only one spot. But for more complicated curves, this definition is not good enough. The figure below shows a point P on a curve C and two lines passing through P. The line L, so it's L, intersects C only once, but it looks, uh, but does not look like it is tangent. On the other hand, the line T looks like it's tangent by intersecting it twice. So this right here looks like it might hit it more than once, but it's not quite specific. So sometimes we have to actually do limits, okay, or we're going to look at some stuff here in a second that will help us figure out these tangent points. So we'll get the problem, find a tangent line to a specific curve of y equals x squared for the following example. So find the equation of a tangent line to the parabola of y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. So if I want to find, now you may not know where to start, but if I want to find a tangent line to that point, what are some information I'm going to want to know? Like if I'm, let's take a step back, sorry. If I'm finding a tangent line, what form is that going to be in? Like what form will that answer be in? It should be linear, right? It's going to be a line. We have a parabola that's y equals x squared. We should be familiar with that. That's your basic parabola. We're trying to find, here's 1, 1. We're trying to find what equation of that line goes exactly through there once. Not twice. And you're saying, well, there could be a lot. No, not necessarily. Because like this, I actually miss drawing. It could actually go through once. Or it could go through like this, where it hits twice. Okay, All those are not going to work. We want the one that only goes through one time. Okay, So in doing so, we're looking at this. We kind of got to think about it in terms of this is where we get a little bit difficult here in calc. We're going to do a lot of, uh, I don't want to say a lot of variables, but let me redraw this here. Um, I don't have this already, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, so if we have that same picture. Okay, so there's my parabola. Here's my point one one. Okay, and we want to intersect at exactly one point, but we're trying to find the slope. We need to find another point on here to compare it to. Okay, so we know that this point here is one one, and we're going to call this point up here x y. We're going to call it q. And this is going to be P, point P. And sorry, this point technically, excuse me, isn't on the parabola. It's kind of, we know it's going to be slightly off of it because it's going to go through at one spot, but we're not sure where that is. Okay. Right, because it's going to be, it's going to be, it's the track of that tangent line, but we don't, um, we don't know what that point is, but we know there's going to be a point there. Does that make sense? Okay. Just in the picture, it's like so close that it's almost pretty much on there. But okay, so let me hold on just one second. First time. All right, so we'll switch back. So this, this is going to be on there in the sense that we're trying to still find the slope between those two spots because what they have in their picture in the book, when you guys look at the book here, it's going to have the tangent piece, and then it's going to have this piece that goes through both, and we're going to compare those in terms of their slopes. And so what we're going to do with that is that we know that this one right there, that is going to be, that's on the x squared. We know that oh, this one's also on the x squared. And so what we can do, and this is where like kind of, 
I like some of the problems you guys had in your pre-calc review because it makes you think outside the box a bit. So what I'm saying is if we're going to go ahead and find the slope between these two points still, okay, if we go, that would be y minus 1 over x minus 1 would be the slope of PQ in this case. Okay, and why this helps us is, is because we actually know what y is. Y is x squared to us. So we can get out of being with two variables. So right now you look at that. Well, I don't know what to do with two variables. Okay, so we can sub this in. So now it's x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Okay. I can do that because the function we are given is x squared. Okay? That's why it's important they're both on the parabola. Sorry, I was right the first time. Okay? So now, what's wrong with that right now? If we're trying to figure out the relationship between these two, what, like, for example, we know we can't look at it where? So like, for example, if I plugged in 1, which is where this point is, what would happen? I get a 0 on the bottom, and we have a problem, right? But we can look and see what's happening around that spot. And that's what we're going to do by hand right now, but limits help us do that not by hand. So what I mean by that is, what are numbers really close to 1 but uh, smaller than 1? So like, if I tried 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.9, 0 0.99 for x. Those are all numbers smaller than 1, right? So what happens when I do those ones, um, I use a little bit different numbers than they did, but that's OK. Um, 0 0.5, that's going to give me, if I put a 0 and I get 1, I get 1.5. They didn't do this one, sorry. I get 1.9 and 1.99. So as that's going, what's it approaching? Two. Good. It's approaching two. Okay. Now if I do this again, this same type of table, uh, ladies, this was on the parabola. I was right the first time. So this point is on the parabola. Okay. And the only thing you missed is where that we've set this up is y minus y, x minus x. We know that y equals x squared. So we plugged in x squared there. And we're here right now and we're evaluating what it's doing <coughs> as it approaches 1. Because if I plug 1 in, I get no solution. I can't do that. So we're seeing what happens as it's approaching 1. Okay. So now if I do numbers bigger than 1, so that'd be uh, 1 point, what they did? We did 2. Started, they started with 2. 1 1.5, 1 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1.001. You plug a 2 in, you're going to get 3, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01, 1, 2.001. So you can see from both sides of the value of 1, as we approach 1, we get really, really close to 2. Does that make sense? We're getting really, really close to 2. Okay? So. What that's going to yield for our next, for the next thing we're going to do, essentially you just looked at a limit. And we'll hit limits more specifically in a second. Limit of this equation as x approaches 1 for x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 equals 2. The answer will be 2. What does 2 represent? 2 is the slope. Okay, so you guys got a lot there. I'm going to stop for a second, especially since I said it was off problem and on problem. First thing, I got to be really precise to you guys, so I don't want to confuse you. First of all, what we were trying to do in the beginning is we did the change, right? We're doing y minus y and x minus x. That's the slope formula, right? Yes, let, let's go back to the basics, okay? y minus y and x minus x is a slope formula. So we were trying to find the slope the whole time of a line that goes through this point that's tangent to the parabola. And so what we did was, we can't do much of this because we don't know what y is or what x is. They're both missing. But we do know 
we're trying to find it to x squared. So we took the x squared and we plugged it in so that we have all x's. Then, this is the long way, we're going to learn limits, next section here, but the long way we look and say we can't figure out what's happening at 1, because we really want to know what's happening at 1. Why is 1 important? What do you think, Pierce? Yeah, tangent to that spot, right? 1's important because that's the spot we know. That's the spot we're trying to find the slope to that point that's tangent. Since that's the important spot, that's why we're looking at 1. Well, you're saying, well, just plug 1 in and see what's happening. That's what we couldn't do because we get no solution. We can't divide by 0. So now we went and looked and said, what's really happening? Well, what's really happening is it's approaching 2 still. So 2 is essentially what is approaching. Therefore, we call it our limit. That's the slope of the tangent at that point. Yes? Um, 2 is a slope of PQ, that's what we figured out. Yeah. Correct. So, essentially we use 2, the second point, yeah, it's going, by relating it to itself, by using the slope formula and the limit will give us the tangency at that point, not, so like technically this line that we figured out, that 2, so you're, you're right on point here. If I'm at 1, 1, and I go up 2 over 1, what's up 2 over 1 from there, Ryan? So up 2, yeah, it'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be 2, 3, right? So up, so it'd be right there, right? Is that point on the parabola? No. So we didn't actually find <coughs> the slope to that point. We use it as a comparison to find the tangency by using the limit. Okay, so I know that that's kind of confusing, right? I think that it should make more sense if it is off, to be fair, but yeah. That's the next lesson. <laughs> next lesson is the limit, like what limits are. Yeah. Limits two. No, the limits two, which essentially means that m is two. The slope of the tangent is two. Correct. Oh, so they're not necessarily going to find it. Right. It's, yeah, they find the point of tangency. The slope of some tangency, yep. Okay, all right, so I'm going to pause it here because I'm going to make this in two parts here. <laughs>